Okay, today we're going to look at um, how to convert, how to convert from one unit to the other. Okay, the most popular method of converting is using the factor label method. Within using the factor label method, what we normally do is we have um, two quantities that are related to each other by some number or some quantity. Um, for example, we know that four quarters is equal to a dollar. A mole is equal to um, Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. A dozen is equal to 12. Um, in this relationship, it's a relationship that allows us to convert from one unit to another. So this is what happens when we're looking, when we're doing the factor label method. Okay, this chart here pretty much shows you relationship of numbers, um, the prefixes that are associated with um, measurements. So, for example, we have a megabyte or a kilowatt or a, a deciliter, a decaliter, whatever it is. Th these prefixes are the things that precede whatever that quantity is. What's important here is that we understand that the prefix represents a number. The prefix represents a number. So if I say one uh, kilowatt, kilowatt would be equivalent to a thousand watts. Okay. What's important is that this number here represents whatever it's being told. So I could say, I can call it dogs, cats, monkeys, whatever. It doesn't matter. One kilo dog would be a thousand dogs. One kilo cat would be a thousand cats. Just like if I have a dozen cars, a dozen um, dimes, a dozen meals, it still represents 12 regardless of whatever it is. So that's very, very, very important within understanding what's the unit represent and how to use that rep how to use that unit. Okay, let's take a look at some problems. The first problem that we're looking at here is we have um, how many kilograms are in one gigagram. So, the first thing that we need to understand here is that within this, we're going to go from um, gigagrams to grams to kilograms. We're told that our answer, or we're told that we're starting off with one kilogram. And from that one kilogram, we want to convert it in one gigagram, we want to convert it to kilograms. So, in order to make this transformation, we need to understand two relationships. The first one is that one kilogram is equal to 10 to the third grams, or we could say 10 to the third grams is equal to one kilogram. And the other relationship that we need to know is that one gigagram is equal to 10 to the ninth grams, or we can also represent 10 to the ninth grams as one gigagram. So this is the relationship that we have, and with understanding that relationship, um, we can solve our problem. The question or the thing that we have to be able to do is to determine which relationship are we going to use and this is simply solved by knowing what you want and what you want to get rid of so whatever you want to get rid of in terms of your units will always be in your denominator and what you're trying to keep will be in your numerator so let's set the problem up how many kilograms is equal to one gigagram now what do I want to get rid of? I want to get rid of my gigagrams. I know that I have a relationship that shows me one gigagram is 10 to the ninth grams, or if I have 10 to the ninth grams is to one gigagram, I can use 
one of these relationships, but I want to use a relationship that's going to allow me to cancel out gigagrams. So this one here, gigagrams is in the denominator and grams is in the top. So kilo, gigagrams cancel out. And if I stop right here, my answer would be in grams. But I don't want to stop right there because I want to go from grams to kilograms. So I have to use another relationship. And then this relationship, I want my answer to be in kilograms. So that's what I want to be on top. So I have two relationships. I can have either this one or this one. So I use the one that will cause my grams to cancel out. Grams being in the denominator. So one kilogram here is 10 to the third grams. My grams cancel out. And my answer is 10 to the third, 10 to the ninth times one divided by 10 to the third which gives me an answer of 10 to the 6 um, kilograms. Grams cancel out, my answer is given to me in kilograms. So this is 1 million. 1 million kilograms. Okay. Let's take a look at another one. How many atometers are in 100 picometers? Okay. The first thing you want to do is define our relationships. One atometer is going to be equal to 10 to the minus 18 meters. Or we can say 10 to the minus 18 meters is one atometer. And we need to know what a picometer is. So one picometer is 10 to the minus 12 meters or we can write the relationship as 10 to the minus 12 meters over 1 picometer. Now let's look at our question to set it up. It says how many atometers is equal to 100 picometers. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to convert my picometers to meters. I have to use a relationship that allows my picometers to go to meters and in this instance is this one here. I have one picometer goes to 10 to the minus 12 meters. Um, picometers cancel out and if I stop right here, my answers would be in meters. But I don't want my answer in meters. I want my answer in atometers. So now I need to cancel out my meters, which means that meters have to be in the denominator. And I use my relationship, which tells me that for every one atometer, I have 10 to the minus 18th meters. My meters cancel out. My answer is 10 to the minus 12th atometers over 10 to the minus 18th, which is equal to 10 to the 8th atometers. All right, okay, let's look at another problem. How many nanograms are in one hectogram? So again, in these type of problems, the thing that we want to be able to do is we want to be able to define what our quantities are. So we know that one nanogram is going to be 10 to the minus 9th grams. So 1 nanogram is equal to 10 to the minus 9th grams. Or we can write 10 to the minus 9th grams is equal to 1 nanogram. And 
for the hectogram, one hectogram would be equal to 10 to the second grams, or we can say 10 to the second grams is one hectogram. So these are the two relationships that we have. Now, the question now is to set up our problem. The question says, how many nanograms is equal to one hectogram? So I want to make sure I get rid of hectograms. So I have to have hectograms in the denominator. What I want to get rid of has to be in the denominator. And what I want to have is going to be in the numerator. So one hectogram here is 10 to the second grams. Hectograms cancel out. And with my hectograms canceling out, I have my answer if I stop right here in grams. But I don't want to be in grams. I want my answer to be in nanograms. So I have to use a relationship that will cause grams to cancel out and nanograms to be on top. And if I look, this relationship here, 1 nanogram is 10 to the minus 9th gram allows me to cancel out my grams over one nanogram grams cancel out and my final answer will be in um, nanograms so I have 10 to the second nanograms divided by 10 to the minus ninth which is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the 11th nanograms. So that's what we will have there. So it's important, again, to realize when you're doing these conversions, keeping track of what you want your answer to be in and what has to be canceled out. So with the factor label method, whatever you want to cancel out is always going to be in denominator. Whatever you want to keep is going to always be in the numerator. So this is important if you want to be able to obtain the right answer every time. So let's take a look at another problem.